What's going on guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to Late Hoops. Today's video, we're just going to be doing a recap on this Nets and Grizzlies game. I actually got it on right now, as you guys can hear. But the score is currently 123 to 108 with three minutes left. And it looks like Kyrie's about to hit the dagger. So I'm not going to waste anyone's time. Let's just get right into this. So ironically, Ben Simmons actually just hit what I would call or dub the dagger. But let's just start off talking about the Nets tonight. For starters, Kevin Durant is getting way too old to see these constant double teams. So it's really nice to see Kyrie Irving back and Ben Simmons just show up a little bit more aggressive tonight. It's really interesting to watch how KD's play style is shifted so much over the years with the wisdom and years he's just achieved in this league he only had four points going into the third quarter and didn't even hit double digit points until there was five minutes left in the third quarter but he was still able to finish this game or from what i can see right now he has 26 points seven assists and six rebounds and he's just able to make himself so efficient and productive on all other aspects of the floor even if it's not just scoring and this is kind of nice to see because the supporting cast was able to keep this nets team afloat even when kevin like i said had four points single digit points all the way up until the third quarter and when kevin needs to come back and put his foot on the gas and stretch this lead like they did tonight you know going into the fourth quarter this game was 96 to 93 and the grizzlies actually had one the last shot there was two seconds left after the shot clock but they could have took in the lead going in to the fourth quarter but they had a lazy turnover down the stretch and the nets in two seconds ran the whole length of the court and i'm pretty sure it was ben simmons or yuda who got a layup to go and they ended up getting the lead to 96 to 93 and now by five minutes left in the fourth it's a 20 point game kevin he's getting up there in age like i said and every single team is pretty much starting every single game by throwing everything they have at kevin double teaming him and just trying to get him off his game and frustrate him when you have a guy like dylan brooks like memphis who just has that grit in him he's able to just face guard him and just chase him around the entire start of the game so when the legs start getting dead in the end of the game with those players that's when kevin durant is starting to excel tonight if you're the nets you for sure noticed at least in the beginning of this game i have to say the absence of nick claxton he's top six in blocks per game for the league averaging almost two and he shoots the highest field goal percentage in the league which is crazy at the rim i should say which is crazy because you have nick shooting such a high percentage at the field at the rim and then you have yuda wananobi who's shooting the highest three-point percentage in the league 60 percent after tonight it's probably even going up but with nick claxton's absence we did get to see markeith morris who was a coach's dmp for the last three games he was able to come in and bring a physical presence like down low for the nets which was desperately needed with not only claxton not being here but just steven adams being on the opposing side of the front court i mean aquaman he's the biggest most burly dude in the league none of us would last a second down there another role player who didn't play many minutes but has to just get his flowers is patty mills this man is 34 years old and he's still diving on loose balls and picking up the opposing team's guards full court and it's just awesome to see when you see guys that aren't your two superstars or your max contract players they're just out there giving it all they've got just like royce o'neal i think he was honestly one of the only L's the Jazz took trading away this offseason. He really can just shoot the ball. Tonight he went four from six from three and in the first 15 minutes of the game he was four of five from three so I understand the second half the production it might have not needed to be there but it's just awesome to see Royce make heads up plays. He had this great lob to Kyrie that really just gets Barclay center rocking and when he's not shooting the ball like I said in the second half of the game he's still able to have plus offense and obviously he He's still an above average defender on the defensive side of the ball and when he's playing that on ball defense he's able to just move in transition and that's something this Nets team is desperately needed if you guys watch my video about the Nets going into the season I was saying that Royce and Ben Simmons would be great additions to have on the defensive side of the ball just because like I said the Nets they've needed it and I also have to tip my hat to Yuta Wananobi I just said it a little bit earlier but man he's been shooting so efficient tonight he had 16 points on four of six from shooting just like Royce O'Neal and he was truthfully he got a standing ovation I mean the Nets fans they're really just loving him and I'm sure it felt good for him because obviously he was a former Memphis Grizzly and a few nights ago against Portland, he had 20 points. It's just really awesome to see him find his stride and find his rotational minutes on this roster. Speaking of people who need to find their stride again, you can definitely see that Kyrie Irving, he 
looks like someone who hasn't played basketball in a couple days he did come out and hit his first three and i thought oh maybe he's just gonna come right back where he left off and that's not to say that he looked bad necessarily tonight the tight handle and the awareness and just the ability to create and facilitate even when the game is getting fast he was still Kyrie Irving in that sense. It's just that you can tell maybe it's his legs or maybe it's just the reps lack thereof, if you will, that some of these jump shots and some of these layups, he was leaving them a little bit on the front of the rim on some of these finger rolls and some of those high glass layups, those crazy contortionist layups that we all know Kyrie can make. Some of those were looking a little bit off and that's fine. You know, it's the regular season. We're going to see this. The Nets though, they do have to get out of foul trouble. I like the physicality when they try to fight over these screens but you can't do it so far away from the baskets where the refs can see everything they relentlessly call ben simmons on stuff like this all the time and that's why he's fouled out in already two of these games actually in their last matchup against memphis i'm sure you guys remembered i think there was like a minute and 20 seconds left where ben fouled Ja at like 35 foot or 40 foot and it was just crazy because it was a big controversial call but when you're right in front of the refs it's hard for them to not make that call but overall i think the nets had a a great night tonight let's talk about the grizzlies a night like tonight where Ja is sitting and desmond bain is sitting it shows you how good this grizzlies team can be in the regular season now i understand it looks like with this game ending it's going to be a 12 point game the final score is 127 to 115 but like I was saying, it's just a testament to how good of a coach Taylor Jenkins is. Through three quarters, this team looked amazing. They even forced the Nets to have 14 turnovers through the first three quarters, but the Nets, like I said, they just caught fire in that fourth quarter. So I don't even think you can be too upset about a loss like this if you're a Memphis fan. Obviously, like I said, you didn't have your star player, John Morant, and the emerging star, Desmond Bain. But Dylan Brooks tonight, he looked like he had something to prove. I, that just jumper it is not the prettiest it's not my favorite but his handles they just looked so tight and he looked way more kept than i've seen dylan brooks in the past and obviously when i was talking about the nets i gave him his flowers on the defensive side of the ball he did make Kyrie and kevin both have a little bit of a rough tough start to this game obviously the nets handled that business a name that I wasn't familiar with going into tonight that I'm definitely going to have to keep an eye out for going forward is John Conchar. He was definitely a little inefficient tonight, but I can't say he wasn't making plays for Memphis, especially in the first three quarters of this game. And the same goes for the slim Spain. He was balling. He didn't have like the craziest output on the stat sheet tonight, but you can just tell that the Memphis Grizzlies really do love their roster from top to bottom, including obviously league favorite. It's Steven Adams, which I have to say, his growth as a player has been awesome to see. I don't know if I'd say it was Memphis that did that or if it was just something that over time he acclimated into this, you know, more just progressive and role-playing center i think when he was in oklahoma city he kind of had some of those ben simmons tendencies where he would on offense at least you know where he would just be sitting there kind of waiting for the handoff game or the i'm gonna catch a lob game but now you see him running the court and he's using his size and honestly he's got a little bit of finesse at the rim and he obviously uses his size on those offensive rebounds and he's just a very understanding of his role on this team he doesn't have an ego either which you cannot put a price on even when it's these crunch time games where everyone wants to play the big minutes in these late minutes steven understands that if someone who can shoot the ball better with him needs to go into the game it needs to happen and especially with steven's free throw woes i don't even want to look at what he shot tonight because on the season he's shooting 25 percent. that's just the little gray area we're not going to talk about something good to talk about for the grizzlies is that their ball movement looked really really solid tonight they look like such a vet team and I, I see a lot of people on NBA Twitter, they're so pissed off about this Memphis Grizzlies team because they're all talking with these crazy egos and they're all talking like they're just, which is ironic because I just said Steven Adams doesn't have an ego. But you see obviously in these post game, you know, they'll swarm the people on the court and everyone's getting all pissed off because they're saying, oh, Memphis Grizzlies, they're talking like they have four or five championship rings, like they need to get humbled, this and that. They do look patient. They look mature. They look like they've been here. Even though they haven't seen crazy success, they do look like a, 
more adult team. They had 19 assists at halftime. And if you guys watched my video yesterday, you know that the Dallas Mavericks averaged 20 assists a game. So this just really is a testament to how talented the West is when Ja Morant doesn't play, Desmond Bain doesn't play, and some of your other starters or backups, I guess you'd say, have off nights and you still are moving the ball amazing and keeping it a close game through three quarters. Obviously, we don't want to talk about that fourth quarter. But all in all, I think it was a decent night for Memphis. I don't hold your head low after this game. If you're a Memphis fan, like you guys know, like everyone else knows, John Morant wasn't here. Desmond Bain wasn't here. The refs tonight, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I have to just say this really quick. If you're made it this far in the video, you're a real one. KD getting teed up for saying and one and then gesturing that it should have been a foul. It's just so lame to me. The refs were not good this game. They haven't been good all year. They called a literal mystery foul on David Roddy, I think in the second or third quarter of this game. And I was checking out that Kings game for a little bit and saw that they ejected Malik Monk for literally bumping into Killian Hayes. I guess you just can't show that you've been hitting the weight room, but you can show some support on this video if you guys leave a like. If you made it this far, I appreciate you so much. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.